Hello, I'm Kate Laskowski, and today I'm going to talk about how to manage your data so your work is transparent and reproducible. Essentially, this is about how to keep a paper trail. And so to start, I first want to say something about data integrity. All of us are in this job and this field because we're fascinated by the natural world, and particularly by the animals that we inhabit this world with. We want to understand how and why these cre creatures do the things that they do. The only problem is that we can't directly ask them this question, but they can communicate with us, and they do so through the data that we collect on them. And so I want to say here that the integrity of the data we collect is paramount. My advisor would always say the data is the data and that whatever story it tells us, we need to believe it and trust it and protect it, even if we don't necessarily like what it says. So don't be tempted to tell the animal story for them. Their data is their voice. And what they tell us is the only truth we really have about this world. And so how do we safeguard this data to ensure that we tell the animal story truthfully? Well, we need to document and protect its journey from, on the sometimes long and winding path from collection to publication. Essentially, you are a parent. And as a doting parent, you want to document all of your data's change and growth as it develops from the day you collect it until the day you publish it. And so starting with the collection of your data, it's absolutely critical that you create and then maintain some sort of hard copies of your data collection. So for us behavioral ecologists, this is often in the form of photos or videos. But in addition to this, you should also always maintain a hard copy lab notebook. This will have all the details of how, when, and where you collected your data. Um, and these hard copies of your data collection are essentially your data's birth certificate. And so it's critical that you keep these for, well, forever. After you've collected it, now it's time to enter the data into some digital format. And this is where a lot of errors can get introduced. Our fingers are clumsy, our eyes get tired, and we get bored. So watch your data entry carefully and correct problems when you see them. Then when you think you're done entering, it's time to start cleaning. There are assuredly some errors in your entered data. Uh, so do rigorous spot checking. Get someone else to spot check you. Plot your data in lots of different ways. And something I learned recently is that sorting your data can help you see if there are any numbers that repeat unexpectedly. So once you think your data is clean and ready for analysis, now is the time to really lock it in place. It's so easy to introduce errors or changes without even realizing it once your data starts maturing through the analysis stage. So I would suggest generating a PDF version of your data file to ensure that you'll always have a permanent, unchangeable record of what your data looked like when it was a tiny baby before analysis began. Your data is now ready to enter the analysis part of its life cycle. Oftentimes, you'll need to do more than one analysis. And at some point, you may realize that you need your data in a different format. There will likely be a lot that happens at this point. And so it's absolutely critical that you document all the changes you make to your data file, like if you manipulate the format or if you group anything together, and then all the analyses that are built on these data. And so I think the easiest way to do this is through your statistical code, like R. Uh, but even other programs like SPSS that are primarily menu-driven, they still have code or syntax that's running behind the scenes uh, that you can extract so you know exactly what you did. GitHub is going to be an excellent resource in this regard and can really help you track versions of your code as you add or remove things. Eventually, you're going to get to the point uh, where you feel like you've answered all of your questions and now you have your results and your figures. At this point, you should generate a document that allows you to exactly recreate your final results. That is the results that's going to go in your paper. And so for me, uh, this is an R markdown file. You can save this as a PDF or HTML file, and it's going to jo join together each piece of your code with the output it produces. I also find that just the act of creating this final clean analysis document always helps me discover errors that I've made along the way. And trust me, you will always make errors along the way. And so with your final results, you can now quickly write your beautiful paper that will get published uh, and the final stage of your data's life is when you deposit it online. Of course, there are instances when depositing your data online might not be possible for some reason, uh, but I really think this should be the exception and not the rule. This deposition is really where your data fledges the nest and goes out into the world on its own. 
Importantly though, it's critical that your data doesn't go out into the world all by itself. It needs a partner and this partner is your code. So deposit both of these in a public repository like Dryad or Figshare. And so these are the pieces to keeping a paper trail. Keep hard copies of your data collection, lock your raw data so it's uneditable, keep digital records and generate a permanent file that allows you to exactly replicate your published findings and then deposit your data and your code in a publicly available repository. While sharing code and sharing data can seem scary or intimidating, I get it, I know, it's really the best way we have to learn from each other and discover and correct mistakes when they happen, and they will happen. And so as scientists, we really should be living in glass houses. But luckily for us, science thrives in the light of day. And I'll just end here with a couple resources that are available. There's many more out there. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to talking to you later. Thank you.